why gaming YouTubers eventually become irrelevant. I want to watch this. Damn. Wait, what did this go from? Five million to seven thousand? Holy shit, that sucks. Oh. Now, recently mm. while making these downfall videos, I've had a load of tip-offs and suggestions from people on my Twitter uh -huh. regarding YouTubers who have gone irrelevant or had a quote-unquote downfall. Now, I've been loving getting these suggestions because it makes my life way easier, so thank you yeah. guys for that. But I've people started doing to notice a trend. Them. About 90% of these YouTubers that you guys suggest are gamers who don't get views anymore and are irrelevant, shall we say. People like Gold Glove TV, 1.26 well, million him. subscribers, 8,000 views per video. Lox, 300,000 subs, 10k views per video. Yeah. Sandy Ravage, 436k subs, 10k views per video. It seems as though the gaming genre is super volatile and way more exposed to irrelevancy compared to any other video genre. But I think that's because the content gets stale. It's because the content gets stale, they keep doing the same thing, people's interests change, and they don't care anymore. Because you're right that a lot of gaming YouTubers become irrelevant, but do you ever think Markiplier is going to become irrelevant? Fucking never, because he's great. He's funny, uh, he's got a great voice, his video quality is great, and he makes tons of different videos, and they're not just gaming. So I, I think that there are many examples of gaming content creators that they will have an audience for as long as they make content. Yeah, he's good looking. It, he, yes, he is. Why is Jack this? I also yeah, want to explore go, how come one. some YouTubers can go Donkey. months without There's uploading, come back and still get millions of views, while other YouTubers don't upload for three days and run the risk of ruining their channel. This video will explore the concept of irrelevancy, so we can answer the question. I think the reason why is because uh, a lot of times, if you if you need if you're gone for three days and your channel dies, it was already gonna die anyway. Like, let's be honest. I think that this. Like, people lose relevancy in, like, short periods of time there whenever they're not, uh, whenever their their channel is very trends-based. So, like, for example, it's very based around, like, getting into the algorithm, you know, farming, uh, you know, like, different clickbait stuff, etc. And, like, as soon as you get out of the algorithm, uh, people aren't going to be watching as much because they never really tried to. Why do gaming YouTubers go irrelevant way more than any other video genre? Competition. There you go, I've given you one word that answers the entire video. Okay. But seriously, what is competition? Well, competition in a broad sense is rivalry between two people who share a similar goal. However, in a YouTube context, competition is the number of other creators that are- You know, like, I didn't even know George Foreman was a boxer. Like, I just thought he made grills. Like, I had no idea. Like, and then my dad was telling me, because he watched that game, you know, that, that fight, the Ali versus George Foreman, and he told me about it. And I'm like, wait, so, like, you, you like, you don't mean, like, uh, Donald Glover, you know, how there's, like, two of them, right? There's a guy that was in Lethal Weapon, and then, like, the younger guy who, uh, you know, does music and was in, like, uh, other shows. Like, but, like, it's actually the same guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, holy shit. I had no idea. Yeah, Danny Glover. Yeah, close enough. Making videos in a specific video genre. For example, Ninja is competing with Tfue, Keemstar okay. is competing with Scare, Some Ordinary yeah. Games is competing with Penguin Zero. I'm sure you can apply it to whatever creator you watch. However, simply knowing- I think that competing on YouTube is not really as direct as it is on Twitch. Because you can go, like a lot of people, they'll, they'll watch my video on a topic, and then they'll go watch somebody else's video, and then they'll watch somebody else's video after that. So it's not like you either watch this person's video or somebody else's video. The competition exists isn't enough to answer the question. We have to dig a little bit deeper. Why is there a lot of competition in the gaming genre? How come some genres of content like gaming or reactions have millions of different videos available on YouTube, while other genres, it's hard to even find a single person making content on a topic that you might be interested in. Well, it comes down to what's called barriers of entry. What do I mean by barriers of entry? In a YouTube setting, it's the amount of obstacles in the way of making a certain video type. 
For example, the specific knowledge of a skill or perhaps the equipment needed to make a specific video. Well, let's apply that to gaming. What okay. does it take to start a gaming channel? A oh, this is a good point. Yeah, I think what he's going to try to say is that gaming and, and being able to uh, record your game footage was a lot harder to do back in the day. And because of that, so few people could get into it that if you could get into it, you were going to be successful just by the nature that you could upload it all computer or gaming think, console, 90% of the developed world has one. A specific video game to make videos on. Again, anyone can get that within an hour if they really want to. Recording software, yeah. editing software, all very now. easily accessible to anyone looking to start making well, content. I remember what it was on like. top of this, there's really no risk from a social standpoint. You can post videos under an anonymous name with no face cam. There's no risk of social rejection, right? And what's the result of all this? Quite literally millions of gaming videos on YouTube to compete with. Mm -hmm. Most of them get no views, but that doesn't matter. We're just trying to highlight the competition and how easy it is to make content within that genre. The current state of monetization- on And I think the honest truth too as well is that if you go through and you look at these like, you know, Minecraft compilation videos that have six views, it's because they're bad. That's why they never take off. Most content doesn't get popular because it's bad. YouTube also likely has a huge role in the desire to be a gaming content creator. With so many Just different video styles becoming demonetized, there's far more incentive to go with a safer genre like gaming. On top of this, yeah. the gaming genre in itself already offers loads of incentives that you might have over other video types. Sponsorships seem to be way more prevalent than other video genres, and also you can stream on Twitch if your YouTube channel becomes big enough. An incentive that's not offered by other genres. No, it's not necessarily true. Not anymore. This video is a little bit older, so yeah. Another aspect that adds to the level of competition is the fact that it's really difficult to differentiate yourself from other gaming YouTubers. Suppose that you're all playing the same game. Where's the point of differentiation besides the level of skill? I think that like really, if, if that's a problem for you, then you're either playing the wrong game or you shouldn't be making videos. I never had a problem like finding a differentiation between What's the difference between watching my WoW streams and watching somebody else's? Or what's the difference between watching my Dark Souls streams and watching somebody else's? I think if you can't answer that question, stop, stop uploading videos. Completely stop doing it and figure out what the answer to that question is and then keep uploading after you figure it out. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but on the surface, from a visual point of view, maybe a slightly different overlay, slightly different editing, slightly different webcam, but overall, differentiating yourself from the crowd in a way unrelated to gaming skill can be difficult. We can use a comparison example like Tfue and Ninja. If you put their streams or videos side by side, they really aren't that different. But no. the thing is, you can compare these two high-level streamers to any other lower-level streamer or YouTuber, and it'll be a pretty similar comparison from a visual standpoint. Well, like, if you look at this guy, for example, like, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know about this, but it looks like he's on his phone. Like, he's on his phone, he's got, like, this annoying fucking banner in the middle of the screen. Like, come on. Like, it, it's not like this is some kind of a fucking big secret. Like, the camera angle fucking sucks. Uh, the, the background is weird. The camera is in a weird spot. Yeah, I mean, come on. Tifu is quite better at Fortnite. The reason why Tifu is popular is because Tifu is funny. He doesn't give a fuck about anything, and he's good at video games. But now let's look at some examples Tifu of the is very likable so we personality. Have some contrast. What about those extremely differentiated YouTubers in a video genre with high barriers to entry? Let's talk about Vsauce. If okay. you haven't heard of him, then you're probably living under a rock. But he's a science YouTuber with 15 million subscribers. That's a lot. He uploads very rarely. For example, his last upload was four months ago in February 2020. You know but four months isn't even that long for Vsauce. His previous upload before his most recent upload was nine months ago. And 2.5 years before that. But these videos all still got millions of views. Imagine if any gaming YouTuber that you can think of uploaded three times in two years. Barney. And whenever Barney makes her next video, everybody is going to watch it. It doesn't fucking matter. Uh, Barney, Uber Danger, uh, fucking look at... Uh, I, I feel like Donkey doesn't upload that often. Yeah, Donkey doesn't do it that often. Uh, who else? Uh, Seth doesn't upload... Pint? Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
the reason why that it doesn't matter that they take a long period off of uh, off of making videos is because they're entertaining, they're funny, and the videos stand on their own. A lot of times, like watching Ninja play Valorant for the 35th game today is not as exciting as watching Barney get Scarab Lord. It, it, oh, like, there you go. What, what are we even talking about? Of course. Yeah, Internet Historian. There you go. Mad Season. There's another one. Yeah, it, it does not fucking matter, man. How dead would their channel be? Pretty dead if you ask me. So then let's ask the question, what makes Vsauce extremely resistant to irrelevancy? It's not just that- Number one, videos are great fucking clickbait. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me just let him fucking talk about it. Vsauce makes good content because there are loads of creators who make great content and still end up going irrelevant. It's that Vsauce has a skill that no one else on YouTube can replicate. Particularly his knowledge and interest in science to a level where no one else can compete with him. There's very few people that have the knowledge that Vsauce yep. has, and of those who do have that same level of knowledge, how many of them have the ability to create engaging, well-edited videos like Vsauce? He's so far ahead of the pack with his skill set that no one else has very any hope true. of catching up. Another example is someone like Brody TV. His skill is that he has the ability to go out and embarrass himself in public and look hilarious while doing it. It's something that no one else is willing to replicate because it can be embarrassing and awkward to film. You need a cameraman who's willing to follow you around for a yeah. day. It's not easy. It's a difficult type of content to produce. It has high barriers to entry. But difficult can be a good thing because the resistance to irrelevancy is much higher. Considering there's minimal competition and very few alternatives to watch if you want that type of content. Final example. Yeah, some people like that kind of stuff. Uh, absolutely. And uh, other people, young people are always uh, relevant. I don't know about that. It depends, being crunchy. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird, but like the other ones were kind of funny and it just really kind of depends on what it is. Uh, overall, it's like, yeah, if somebody's funny and they're unique, it doesn't really matter if they take breaks or stop streaming or stop making videos. If they come back and they're making that same content, then people are going to watch. That's it. Example, Casey Neistat. What does he have in his videos that no one else can replicate? Well, he has a lifestyle that very few can replicate. He has a non-douchey influencer personality despite mm -hmm. all of his success. Another thing that not many people can replicate. And on top of this, he has filmmaking skills beyond this world that no one can even get close to replicating. Yeah. He has so many skills that make him indispensable on the platform. And the result is that he can make YouTube videos that no one else will ever be able to replicate on the... This is also like a, a very true thing that a lot of people try to kind of like skip this step whenever they make content is that if you don't have a skill or you don't know something that a lot of other people don't know, why would anybody watch you? Like you either have to be really entertaining or you have to be uh, like really good at something. And like, this is even true with like some of the uh, like hot tub streamers and stuff. Some of these girls take like tons of time off of doing this and they come back and they have just as many viewers, if not more. And you know why? It's because they're really hot. That's why. It's that simple. And it doesn't matter if they take a break because whenever they come back, they're still hot. And so people are going to keep watching. Same level. He's only uploaded Doesn't five times matter. in the last four months. The views might not be as strong as they were previously, but they're still pretty decent. If you were to upload five times in four months on a gaming channel, it's pretty likely that your YouTube career would be pretty much fried. So, avoiding irrelevancy appears to be... And I think that one, one uh, commonality, whenever we were talking about all the people that were not part of that, like Barney, Uber Danger, uh, like uh, Pints, etc., is that all of those people are personalities first. Like they're a personality and they're funny and they're interesting and that's why people come back and watch them again. Seth, Max, or yeah, exactly. Be just having a skill that you can perform on camera that very few other people can replicate without working on themselves first. Mm -hmm. Then let's apply that to gaming. Most gaming YouTubers don't have this type of specific skill that no one else is willing or able to replicate. Well, kind of. I say that lightly. I'll talk about that in a second. 
But firstly, I think we can all agree, if a gaming YouTuber doesn't post, there's a hundred or even a thousand other people playing the same game who are all easily accessible on YouTube for you to watch as a viewer. It goes back to yeah. the point that if you aren't consistently producing, there's always going to be another gaming YouTuber who is. But Look at Doc. Doc stopped making content two times. Whenever he had the, uh, the transparency issue and whenever he got banned on Twitch, he came back, still people were watching him. Still, everybody was fucking watching him. And you know why? It's because nobody does it like the Doc. That's why. It's literally that fucking simple. Let's go further back to what I said He's about gaming exception? YouTube is not having but a But why is he the that exception? No That's the point what I'm I've making. What I've said is obviously not entirely true. In order for there to be certain gaming YouTubers that rise to the top, there has to be some sort of skill in place for these top gaming YouTubers, right? Well, of course. Why do you watch a Tiff or a Ninja? Because they're exceptionally skilled at the game that they're playing. But what about, for example, like those Minecraft YouTubers where there isn't a specific skill aspect to the game? What is their skill? It's not like you need to be exceptional at the game to be an entertainer on it. Well, that is their skill, entertainment. Yeah, they're being And this is why so yeah. many of them go irrelevant over the long term. Entertainment in itself is an extremely volatile skill, especially in the gaming world because everyone is entertaining in some aspect. So then we might ask, what's the incentive for watching an entertaining YouTuber with a limited skill aspect? It's the game they're playing, right? You like the relatability of- Well, people don't care about being good at a lot of video games. Like, they would rather watch a game that's like, they would rather watch somebody who's really funny than somebody who's really good. And it also depends on the genre. Like, for example, MMOs, people want to watch somebody who's really funny, which is lucky for me because, you know, I can do that a lot better than I can do being good at the game. Uh, but however, uh, if it's FPS, everybody's going to watch Shroud because Shroud is really fucking good at the game. That's his focus. He focuses on being really fucking good at the game, and he does that. Watching them do something in a game that you personally might be able to replicate in your own time. But what happens to both types of gaming YouTubers, the skilled and the unskilled one, when the game that they're playing begins to decline in popularity? Well, your audience is going to decline naturally, and there's nothing you can do to stop that. If people aren't interested in the game, people aren't going to watch you, period. You can be the Oh yeah, this definitely happens. Like... People have like a big game that they get really attached to, the game dies, and so does their channel. That's just what happens. Failure to adapt, people that are not able to diversify, this happens to a lot of people. Rolls Royce of entertainment and the most skilled player on a specific game, but if the world isn't interested in that- It's like World of Warcraft is a great example. Uh, Ten years ago, people cared if you were good at Arena. Now it doesn't matter. So if you're good at Arena nowadays, nobody really gives a fuck. You're not going to be able to build a career being good at Arena. But if you were really good at Valorant, then you would be able to. That's just the truth. A game you're playing, you're not going to get views. And of course, there are exceptions to this like PewDiePie and other variety creators. But generally speaking, if the game that the content is being made on is on a decline, the views are also naturally going to be on a decline. Case study, someone like Null I think also another reverse case study for this is I think it was Seth uh, who made a video about Dwarf Fortress before the update. And obviously this was not a very popular uh, game, but it was an extremely popular, popular video. Because people use the video as a canvas to tell a story. And at that point, it doesn't necessarily matter if the game is good or popular or not. It matters whether the game is conducive towards an entertaining experience. Noah, following Fortnite's decline in popularity, his views have naturally dwindled. He was uploading quite literally daily, very high quality content. But given the decline in the game he was making content on, the growth just wasn't there. So when the game that the specific YouTuber is known for begins to decline in popularity, what happens to those gaming YouTubers who specifically have that gaming skill on a particular game? I've seen that a lot with WoW. Is that like, especially recently, there's a lot of like WoW content creators and their views are just so low. It's so bad. I feel bad for them. But it's like people just aren't that interested in consuming WoW content right now. That's just the truth. And it's, it's not your fault. You didn't make the game like this, but that's what it is. 
People like your T-Fuse and your Ninjas. Well, they have two options. They can stick with a game that they're exceptionally skilled at and are making content on, but it's a sinking ship given the declining viewership. They're not stupid. They know that games come and go, rise and fall in popularity. If they mm -hmm. stick with that game, there's a chance they'll go down with the ship. So the second option seems more viable, to change game to whatever is most popular. But then let's take T-Fuse yep. for example. Previous top 50, top 20, top 10 player in Fortnite, right? Well, when he swaps to a game like Call of Duty Warzone, is he going to be top 50, top 20, top 10 player right off the bat? Well, of course not. Skill level is unique. Well, he's still very, very good. Like, Tifu, any FPS he's going to play, it's going to be fun to watch him play that game because it's a similar skill set. To a particular game. It might translate a little bit, but not in its entirety. Maybe in yeah. the top 10,000 or the top 5,000 players. While top 10,000 is a reasonably impressive number, why are you going to watch a streamer or a YouTuber in the top 10,000 players when there will be another streamer on Twitch or YouTube on that game in the top 20 or top 10 true. for that new game that they've navigated to? The reason you watch a Tfue or a Ninja is, if I had to estimate, 80% game skill, 20% personality. When the skill level on the new game is much lower than the skill level on the previous game, there's not nearly as much incentive to watch. Yeah. And this is reflected in the YouTube views for Tfue as well as many other Fortnite creators. People like Ninja, Muzelf, Lachlan. I mean, to be fair though, to... like if you look at these numbers, oh, oh, this is only the 20th. Like, I, I mean, getting 17 million views uh, a month on YouTube is really good you as well as many other Fortnite creators. People like Ninja, Muzelk, Lachlan, they're obviously not irrelevant or even close to it, but you can see how their view charts pretty much perfectly correlate with the popularity of the game. And yeah. this is kind of what we've seen with most of the big Call of Duty YouTubers from back in the day. As their main game that they're linked to declines in popularity, they just kind of go down with it. And the only ones who stay relevant are the ones who either move to new ventures or develop a bit more of a personality and become a variety streamer. Like but King generally Star. speaking, think about White Boy 7th Street, X Jaws. At the time, they were the kings of the world because their skill was relevant. But looking back, you can see how disposable they are considering that their only developed skill within their videos is their ability to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And now that that game has a minimal audience, they have to resort to other sh** that everyone else can replicate. Football card opening, how to smell flowers, just general clickbait BS. Anything to get a few more views before the channel disintegrates into nothing. There's no effort, there's no passion, there's no nuance. There's nothing that is being done in these videos that can't be replicated by anyone else on this platform. And the ultimate- I think also what happens with a lot of these people is that they get to a point where they've been successful for long enough that they have enough money that they're financially stable and then they relax and they don't try as hard. And guess what happens whenever you relax and you don't try as hard? Well, the videos aren't as good as not, not as many people are gonna watch them. So like, I see this all the time. It's like people fall off. Well, they didn't fall off, they got off. Result, a dead channel. So then let's finish this video by answering the original question. Why do gaming YouTubers go irrelevant more than any other type of channel? Well, the videos and the channel popularity are often based on the popularity of something that's totally out of their control, the popularity of the game. On top of this, there's unlimited competition for the genre considering the low barriers to entry. Finally, differentiation beyond skill level is extremely difficult given the thousands or even millions of channels available for viewing. If you're a gaming YouTuber and want to avoid irrelevancy, it seems as though you have to offer something unique. Yeah, a imagine unique personality. That like CD and the third or exceptional skill across multiple games like Tfue or Shroud. You have yep. to have something else that no one else can offer. Be like Vsauce, be like Brody TV, be like Casey Neistat. Offer the YouTube audience something that no one else can offer. If you do, you'll have a cruisy time on the platform. Everybody makes it so complicated, but it's really not. All right, that's going to be all for this video, guys. If you guys could like and subscribe, I'm going to put a thumb up for both because they both do the same thing. I would appreciate the hell out of that, but other than that, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Oh, that's pretty good, yeah. Uh, I, I like that video. And uh, overall, it's just like, be better. The thing is that it actually is. It's like, oh wow, people aren't watching my videos as much. Well, have you ever thought that maybe it's because your videos suck? Well, I, I, I mean, like, uh, may, I mean, maybe, like, that could be it. Maybe the content sucks. Like, just take a second and think, maybe it's not the world, maybe it's your fault. Yeah, maybe it's, it's all oh, the game is declining. It's like, yes, obviously the game declining has an effect, but it's your decision to stay with that game. Yeah, just being aware can do the same. Streamers do the same. Uh, streamers do that too. They co-part on viewer count. 
Oh yeah, I mean like of course they they do. Like your account is like the one fucking thing on Twitch that everybody is defined by. So of course people care about that. But overall, it just sucks. I mean, it does suck whenever your game used to be really popular and now it's not as popular anymore. Yeah, because you're more well established doesn't mean you get to stop trying. Yeah, there are a lot of times where people are um people are very well established and they just don't try. And guess what? People lose interest. And there are so many instances of that on Twitch, on YouTube, etc. And the truth is, too, if that person came and they started making more content back the same as they used to make back in the day, they will get those viewers back. Because there is something unique about a lot of these people, but these people just don't want to work very hard to accentuate it anymore because they're complacent or they're happy with where they're at. And this isn't a bad thing all the time. Sometimes people are like, you know, I used to pump out one video a day, but I have a family now and now I don't do it as much. The channel's not as popular, but I'm happier. And so you have to keep that in mind too. Like whenever somebody is successful on YouTube or not successful on YouTube, that's not necessarily an indictment of their whole life. So uh, all content, AI content's becoming talk show. Uh, transition's okay, just, just keep it relevant. Yeah, exactly. People just move on to audience and creators. Tons of streamers live in legitimate fear of diversifying as well. Well, that's because whenever most streamers diversify, it kills their channel. Like, how many of you guys have seen, like, a WoW player diversify and play another game that's not WoW, and it just absolutely destroys their fucking channel? Like, they go from getting, like, 700 viewers to getting 70 viewers or 40 viewers or something like that. You? Not really. I mean, the truth is that, like, I I've been very lucky. Like, my Dark and Darker was super fucking popular. Like, and I never played that game. I just logged on and played it. My viewers went up. Like, everybody loved that game. Dark Souls, massively fucking popular. Final Fantasy, extremely fucking popular. I went and I played Fortnite, and people liked watching that. Same with Vampire Survivors. Are there games that don't accentuate my content very well? Absolutely, and I try to avoid those. But overall, no, I, I've gotten lucky, and I've been able to uh, stream other games and do very well with them. And, uh, yeah, that, that's what I would say. Uh, let's see here. And a new dev blog for Valheim just came out. Uh, that's because your main content is Reacts. Well, the thing is Reacts are always going to be really popular because there's no barrier to entry with Reacts. Like people want me to watch and uh, it's not diversifying. That's stopping what you're known for and doing something else. Diversifying is still sticking what you're doing. Uh, doing OGs. Well, I, I think it, it depends on what it is. Like I, I, I get what you're saying, but like that's clearly not what I'm talking about. But, like, for example, people want me to look at the new Valheim dev update. I will do that. However, whenever I do that, there's going to be a lot of people in the chat that these people don't watch. They don't play Valheim. They don't watch Valheim content. The content that I'm going over is not meaningful or relevant to them, so they're going to lose interest and leave and watch something else that's more relevant to them. And that's fine. That's the way the world works. And if you don't understand that, then you're just going to be constantly disappointed. And it's like that's the parasocial element that streamers think that they have with their audience. Like their audience wants to watch them do whatever. Yeah, there's going to be some people that want to have you, you know, they want to watch you do anything. And you always want to make that circle bigger of like concentric circles of viewership. But overall... Um, that's always going to happen. And you can't get upset about that because, I mean, you do that with everything else too. It's totally fine. Is you okay with the TOS? Do you have to tip every single video in person you watch? Uh, I, 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 you have to, like, if you watch somebody's video, you have to give them money. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't think people would do that. That's like watching, like, sub-only streams. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you also got a lot of attention with the court case, John Amber. I mean, people uh, who never seen you, the chance to see your personality brought a lot from here too. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was very popular. Lost Ark was very popular. Like, uh, you, you know, the, the WoW Dragonflight stuff was really popular. But you can't look at high points and then say that's where things need to be. Like, that's not really sustainable. And also, like, with Lost Ark, for example, my stream was popular because obviously I'm, like, one of the main MMO streamers of, like, the game. So I have, like, a you know, fucking first mover advantage, a, you know, snowball effect with my channel whenever a new MMO comes out. 
Absolutely. So I absorb a lot of the hype viewers. But another even bigger reason why my channel was successful then was because of drops. There's massive drops. Like you go whenever Tarkov has a wipe and you see somebody on Tarkov that has 80,000 viewers. It's not because Tarkov's that fun to watch. It's because there's drops. That's the same thing with Lost Ark. It's the same thing with WoW. Like, do you think it was normal that my alt channel was getting 60,000 views running around Xerath Mortis talking to Cody? Fuck no. It was because it drops. And it's the same thing with the Johnny Depp thing. Is that, it? yeah, Overwatch 2 as well. Yeah, you see somebody in Overwatch 2 with that much Pestilius through in 50,000 viewers. Yes, I know. And if you took the drops away, you can take at least one of those digits out. Because that's the way that drops work. They're effectively view botting, but you know, it, it's not really as bad because at least people are actually watching the stream. Anyway, so it's the same thing with the Johnny Depp thing is that people were watching for Johnny Depp. They were watching for the content. So the moment that that content is over, everybody leaves. That's the way it goes. And if you get upset about that, you have an unhealthy relationship with your understanding of content because that's what makes sense. Viewers are a bit like a school of fish. Something new and hype comes out. Everyone changes direction at the same time. Yeah, I think that's very true on Twitch, less true on YouTube, I would say. Yeah, there were drops. Yeah, but no, there weren't. But what I'm saying is that people were in. So the point with like the Lost Ark thing and the Johnny Depp thing was that the main draw to my channel was not me. It was drops or the content, like the Johnny Depp drama and all that and like my commentary of it. So the moment that those two things disappeared, people left. That's what makes sense. Well, Sacrifice really said 400K, Tower Fantasy 250K, New World 200K. People come for the release hype. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily the best argument because Tower of Fantasy and New World also had drops on release. You see what I'm saying? And like the goal, the goal to have is to farm those different trends and then hope that you have some residual viewers from each of those trends to build up into a larger overall snowball. So next time something like that happens, next time a big game comes out, more people are going to be willing to come and watch you play it whenever it gets released. That's it. Then the last arc wouldn't work for 90% of people on release. Yeah. There's nothing uh, you can benefit from not following the meta on Twitch, though. If you stay in your own category, when people leave for something, you can get those viewers not interested in new shit. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes it's not in others. I think it's very specific. And it depends on, like, kind of, like, usually I think following trends is probably the best idea. But don't force yourself to follow trends. Does that make sense? Yeah, I started watching it during a depth trial, stuck with every stream ever since. Oh, exactly. I mean, I know a lot of people have, right? And, and sure, like from that or from Lost Ark or from Dragonflight or from, uh, I mean, the Andrew Tate stuff, right? I mean, like people love watching that. Uh, what other drama arcs were there or like content arcs were there? I, I, I don't know, like Diablo Immortal, right? Like people discovered my content from Final Fantasy and, and like you just in general build, uh, you know, build up that number. Uh, it's more doable to switch games and change content since you always still have some viewers left. Uh, I don't think that's really true. I think that it's very important on Twitch for people to people to not make it look like their channel is dying. Because Twitch is very much a hype platform. And if there's the implication or the understanding that a channel is boring now or a channel is dying, people will stop watching it because it's dying. And they will perceive the content as being worse because they see the number being lower. That's just what happens. I've seen this happen for years. People are just like super, super, super uh, like herd animal behavior on Twitch. It's massive. How very stressful for a streamer. It's massively stressful, but that's just how it is. Like you can talk about how bad it is and how it's stressful and how much it upsets you. But it doesn't fucking matter because it's never going to change. Like, that's just, the, like, that's, it is what it is. Like, you can get mad. Oh, it shouldn't be like this. I don't like this. Like, who gives a fuck what you like? That's how it is. That's life. Stop crying, pussy. Holy shit. Let's see here. Just don't suck. Um... 
Your takes are fucking ridiculous. Uh, have a true opinion. Oh wait, am I? Uh, am I? Am I wrong? I don't know. I feel like what I'm saying is very true. Yeah, Sarah playing games to an audience is stressful. It is. It absolutely is stressful. I think that whenever you have a large audience of people, and it's like another thing is that people try to, uh, people try to figure out ways to agitate or make the streamer mad and like constantly trying to like focus on a game when you have people that are trying to get under your skin or trying to piss you off or get your attention or annoy you or something like this like trolling you in one way or another uh th then that's then it, it 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 can be extremely stressful as because you said it boasts as long as you have the juice people are going to watch exactly yeah people are going to watch if you are entertaining and you're funny and you have good content. If you aren't, then they're gonna leave. It's just, it's that simple. I, I don't know. I feel like a broken record, but what was the downside whenever you were doing eight hours of React? Well, the thing is that whenever, whenever I'm doing React content, for example, uh, you know, there are people that like seeing gaming content. I think that, for example, React content is like steak, uh, you know, gaming content is like cookies. I, I don't know, like each different, uh, each different game is a different type of food. People don't want to eat the same food every day, even if it's steak. A lot of people don't eat steak every single day. There are some people that do, but many people don't. So what happens is uh, you have to just, you, 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 people like, like a, a variety of things. Like, that's why I try to switch things up and change them around. You lucky you didn't get an audience that are constantly trying to troll you, at least compared to other streamers? Oh, I, um... I've had that happen. And the way that I deal with that... So... The way that you deal with people that are, like, trying to harass you or make you mad is you just ban them and you ban people that enable them. That's it. And if you do that for a while, it goes away. It's that simple. Mm. Have a humor is strange and oddly. That's something that makes it fascinating. They're just randomly talking. Yeah, of course I try to be interesting. Of course, I, I try to at least. Like a chamber of echoes. Yeah, but like that's good. Nobody like nobody wants to go. I I think that people again. This is these are internet people that overvalue their own opinion. Of course people want to be in an echo chamber. Like, most people aren't always in an echo chamber. What do you think? Like, like you're, you're, like, most people that are watching me agree with generally what I'm saying. That's why they watch me. Everybody is always in an echo chamber. That's the way things go. It's just like, it's such a weird thing. I, I think it's just really disagreeable people that want to fight and argue get mad whenever other people don't want to indulge that, and then they act like it's their problem. No, it's not. The audience has changed over the years, much less spurky comments. Well, yeah, because they're banned. And that's how it works. It's so simple. Talk what percentage of people are actually able to use this information proves the fact you're entertaining. That's why we're here. Well, the reason why people like watching this kind of stuff is because it's direct and honest, and I think that even if you don't stream, it can be something that you can use in your everyday life. You know, stop worrying about what the trends are, do something that you want to do, and focus only on that. You know, finding that comparative advantage, etc. And I think also it's interesting for people to hear, uh, you know, what it's like to stream or something like that. It's on a spectrum, just because you don't agree doesn't mean you need to argue. Yeah, for sure. Some content creators do lack on the uh, reflect on themselves, though. Well, if somebody um, if, if if somebody is not able to like self reflect and look at what they're doing wrong, then that's their own fault. That's their own problem. I think that it's much more common that like viewers are upset that like a streamer doesn't 
share their viewpoint with something like for example like oh this streamer has like a massive ego like i don't like this or oh they won't see my point of view they they won't see other people's points of view like oh like anything like this like the truth is like these are just people that want a streamer to agree with them or do what they want and the streamer doesn't want to do it and so it's like now they make it out like it's a personal fucking uh, a self growth problem with that streamer when it's actually this person is just trying to make a person do something they don't want to do so yeah just don't watch them exactly <laughs>